pollen sticks to the hairs on the worker bee's legs and is combed into hairless areas called pollen baskets. The baskets are then scraped off over other eggs which the queen has laid. Bumblebees raise their body temperature to 30 degrees in order to fly. The queen does the same, shivering her wing muscles. But she uses the heat to brood her eggs. It's now high summer and all change in the bumblebee nest. This is what's called the switch point. The queen begins to lay unfertilized eggs, which will go on to become males. Any larvae from the remaining fertilized eggs, under five days old, will now turn into new queens. The production of males marks a critical phase in the life of the colony. They feed on the honey cups with no intention of refilling them, but their destiny lies elsewhere. They must find freshly formed queens from different colonies. The newborn queens inside the old nest desperately build up enough body fat to get them through their winter hibernation. They head off to mate with males from other colonies, returning from time to time to top up their reserves. Autumn has now set in. No workers have been produced since the switch point, and food reserves are getting low. The result? The whole colony dies. The only bees now left alive are the new queens. They start hibernation immediately, finding new places to shelter. This one now lowers her breathing rate and produces a natural antifreeze to protect her against the cold. And throughout the winter, the future of the next bumblebee colony rests with her. Scientists researching black bears discovered that while they're dormant, they can go around a hundred days without urinating. In fact, they release a hormone which converts this waste product into proteins, so replenishing body muscle that would otherwise waste away. Yes, when the going gets tough, the tough sometimes don't get going. They just fall into a torpor. Kangaroo Island, Southern Australia, home to a whole array of Australia's indigenous wildlife. Some are very familiar, but others are not. This bizarre looking creature is not a hedgehog, but a short-beaked echidna, a primitive egg-laying mammal. They don't hibernate, but enter into a state of torpor. Torpor is when an animal lowers its body temperature and metabolism for short periods. But in echidnas, this doesn't just happen during the cold of winter. It can occur at any time of year and last for up to three days. Their inactivity is most intriguing. Echidnas in the Australian Alps have had temperatures as low as four degrees Celsius, and in Tasmania, one echidna did not take a breath for two hours. Here at Pelican Lagoon, Peggy Rismiller is studying them. It can take hundreds of hours to find one, so she's fitted all the local females, and some of the males, with radio transmitters. The radio signals indicate that the echidna in this hole might be about to go into torpor. That blue device on its back is the transmitter. To find out more about the torpor, Peggy needs data. She measures the air and ground temperature with probes. All the Pelican Lagoon echidnas have electronic tags under their skin. These are activated by body heat, and from it, Peggy gets an instant reading. This animal's temperature is still relatively high, but is it on the way down or on the way up? With a laptop recording all the information, she can monitor it continuously and see if there are any changes. <laughs> 